Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Ohio. A regular season of believing potentially comes to an end today, but the Indians hope this is just the opening act. An AL Central Division title. 11 walk-off wins at home. Three All-Stars and a Major League Best 14-game winning streak has done a lot to whet everyone's appetite. Next up, a trip to the ALDS to face the Boston Red Sox in the final season of David Ortiz. The Indians' quest for their first world championship since 1948 is just beginning as the regular season winds down next on Sports Time Ohio. The regular season ends today here in Kansas City, or does it? The push to the playoffs continues as the Central Division champions wrap things up today against the defending world champion Kansas City Royals here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. There are still multiple scenarios in play today that could involve the Indians having to go back to Detroit to play that makeup game tomorrow. The simplest path for the Indians is a win today, plus wins by both Toronto and Baltimore, and the regular season is then over. The Indians would host the Red Sox next Thursday in the division series. However, if none of those things happen, or if only one or two of those things happen, everything's up in the air. Well, in a perfect world, the Indians can win today, and, uh, uh, you know, a few other teams, the combination could win. They won't have to go to Detroit and play. But still, with destiny in their own hands, if they win today and win tomorrow, they get home field advantage anyway if they have to play these last two games and hopefully that'll be the case they can open up Thursday in Cleveland as opposed to going to Boston it is nice to have a hand in your own destiny something the Detroit Tigers don't have today in the wild card race they need to win and a lot of things to happen for them to still have a shot for the Cleveland Indians maybe it was surprising news at the end of yesterday's game when Terry Francona took Trevor Bauer out he told him hey you're going to start game one of the ALDS for the Indians you know and they took a long time to figure this out Trevor Bauer pitched very well had a good two seamer good curveball yesterday with a few change ups so he will be game one starter regardless of where it uh, opens at Corey Kluber will be number two Josh Tomlin your number three pitcher but for Kluber the reason why he's going in game two because it would be full rest for him if they have a game five no matter where they play he would be the pitcher to end that series in game five and that's exactly the way you want it and with his injury he needs every day of rest he can get glad to have you with us on this Sunday here in Kansas City and still nothing is really settled in the playoff race we'll be back with today's first pitch plus we'll pay special tribute to Vin Scully who calls it a career this afternoon for the Dodgers. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
I mean, if you're trying to say something bad about him, you, you, you're you really looking for, I mean, you're having a bad day. Because this guy is, he's, he's everything that everybody's saying. Every time you see him, you feel like you're the most important person. And I'm sure he does that to everybody. You know, Rick, I got to thinking about Vin Scully's career and lasting 67 years in the broadcast booth is just incredible. But then I started thinking in my own terms, he had already been broadcasting Major League Baseball for almost 20 years before I was even born. <laughs> it's an amazing run that will probably never again be duplicated. You know, unfortunately, we didn't have an opportunity to go see him every year because we we're American leaguers, but we did have a couple of opportunities to talk to him. The greatest broadcaster, in my opinion, of all time. We're honoring him with these pins today and what a nice gentleman I mean not a great announcer but a, a better person and uh, just a humble man to go out there and the things that he's seen in the game of baseball is remarkable we'll never see another one like it he is the greatest of all time he was opinion. so gracious with his time when we had a chance to meet with him a few times and no soundbite can sufficiently sum up a career that has lasted nearly seven decades so we thought maybe it would be more appropriate to let you listen to some of the greatest moments in the the career of Vin Scully. Little roller up along first, behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. High fly ball into right field. She is gone. Strike two pitch is hit back to the box, dribbling to second. Samuel on the bag, close to first double play. Fernando Valenzuela has pitched a no hitter at 10 17 in the evening of June the 29th, 1990. If you have a sombrero, throw it to the sky. He's done it. Clayton Kershaw pitches a no-hitter, a career-high 15 strikeouts. And then when it's all said and done, he'll escape all the excitement and the noise and talk about a dream come true with his wife, Ellen. Big moment in a young life. Aaron waiting, the outfield deep and straight away. Fastball is a high drive into deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence.
Hoffman Stadium here in Kansas City on an absolutely perfect Sunday afternoon to wrap up this the 2016 regular season or at least we think this will be the final game of the regular campaign for the Cleveland Indians but there is still always the chance that we will go back to Detroit for that makeup game tomorrow afternoon we should know by the time this game is finished this afternoon how that scenario ultimately plays itself out the Indians have beaten the Royals seven straight times they've gone 13 and 5 on the year against Kansas City the Indians are 93 and 67 on the year while Kansas City limping to the finish line at 81 and 80 they need a win to clinch a winning campaign they have lost three straight and seven of their last 11 ball games. The Royals have taken the field behind Ian Kennedy and we'll take a look at Terry Francona's starting lineup this afternoon. It's brought to you by Progressive. Carlos Santana will lead it off. He's at first base today. Jason Kipnis will bat second. Francisco Lindor will hit third. Mike Napoli will DH and hit cleanup. Jose Ramirez seventh in the American League batting race will hit fifth and it's Lonnie Chisinau followed by the American League stolen base leader Rajay Davis Tyler Naquin is hitting eighth and Jan Gomes in the starting lineup batting ninth and our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher for the Kansas City Royals will be Ian Kennedy he is a 31 year old he will be tying a career high with his 33rd start and his sixth start against the Indians this year. He is two and three and has a no decision against the tribe and this guy uh, you know he just logs a bunch of innings. He has 181 strikeouts and 188 innings. He has allowed 32 home runs. The Indians have helped do some damage in that department and we'll see if the Indians can go out there and get to him and get to him early but he's pitched a couple of very good games against the tribe this year. We'll set the defense behind him and it looks like this in the outfield it'll be uh, Gordon in left field Dyson will be in center Orlando over and right Cuthbert is at third Escobar short Merrifield is at second Morales gets the start at first today and Butera doing the catching. Bill Miller the crew chief will call the balls and strikes at Hickox at first Greg Gibson at second and Mike Estabrook down at third. Carlos Santana ready to lead it off for Cleveland and what a final month of the season it has been for Santana who comes into this afternoon's game batting 261 now on the year Boyd by a tremendous final month that has seen him bat 337 with six homers and 21 runs batted in Ian Kennedy's first pitch fastball is belted foul. And, and he, we are underway. He's been aggressive in this series when it comes to swings. He let off the on Friday night with a uh, double on the very first pitch of the ball game. He has doubled and tripled in back to back games. The 0 1. The last Indians player to do that was Odell Hale in 1936. Oh, my roomie. <laughs> my former roomie. And he misses inside two balls and a strikes. 73 degrees at game time under mostly sunny skies. That's outside three and one. Santana has walked 98 times on the year. That's the third most in the American League. And a strike is called. Not what he was looking for there. He was looking for a pitch he could turn on with the 3 1 count. Up back out of play. Kansas City has been making a conscious effort of pitching a lot of the hitters inside early in this series. Ian Kennedy with the 3 2 pitch and Santana hits it high in the air to right center field drifting back is Gerard Dyson and the center fielder grabs it in the middle of the warning track for out number one. 
The keys to the game are courtesy of Wayside Furniture. For the Indians today home field in the American League Division Series that home field advantage very much on the line. And offensively the tribe looking for a strong finish from Francisco Lindor and Jose Ramirez. Jason Kipnis stands in one for eight in the series. Kipnis begins the day eighth in the American League with 39 doubles. There's a drive to deep right field. Back is Orlando. It's over his head and off the top of the wall. He's on his way to second with double number 40. Just what you were looking for, and I'm sure he was too. 40th double. That's a nice little uh, milestone to get on the year. And he does it in his first at bat on a high fastball. He gets on top of it, goes right off the right field fencing in front of the bullpen out there for the Indians, and he kept double number 40. So he's in scoring position now for Francisco Lindor. Lindor three for five in this series with two doubles, five runs driven in. And he has scored three times and he drives one to fairly deep right but Orlando makes the catch Kipnis tags he'll head to third and now there are two down. Both Kipnis and Lindor aggressively getting after Ian Kennedy. Well it's been a steady diet of fastballs from Kennedy and these guys have been getting after it early. Mike Napoli. Just one out of nine in the series. Tied for the team lead in home runs with Santana. They've each hit 34. Strike to the outside corner. Napoli a career high 101 runs driven in this year. Royals put three on the left side of the infield. Shot for that outside corner again, but it's off the plate and one and one. Perfect pitch at the knees on the outside corner and Ian Kennedy gets ahead in the count one and two. Take a look at it on our Nissan pitch tracker a well spotted fastball at the knees outside corner gets the second strike. Spoils it and the pitch goes right back to the screen. And so as per usual Mike Napoli will see his fifth pitch of the at bat he has averaged more than four and a half pitches per plate appearance this year. That's more than a full pitch more than the league average. The major league average. Back out of play. Well right now 15 pitches for Kennedy 14 have been fastballs. The only off speed pitch he threw was to Jason Kipnis on first pitch a breaking ball other than that everything have been heaters. There's another one and Napoli pops it up foul ground over to the dugout as Morales but can't get to it. Henry's Morales in at first base today. Eric Hosmer will sit out the season finale. Though certainly available to pinch hit or play later in the game. Salvador Perez who had not played in the first two games of the series getting the start at the DH yeah. spot today for Kansas City. and I wonder why Josh Tomlin's on the mound and he has outstanding numbers against him. I'm sure that's why he is in there. 
with a one two count. He goes up the ladder and strikes out Napoli to end the inning. No runs ahead a man left. Now the Royals are coming to bat. Today for Ned Yost and the Kansas City Royals, courtesy of Spitzer Automotive. Gerard Dyson will lead it off with Merrifield batting second. Kenry Morales bats third. Then it's Salvador Perez who will DH, Paulo Orlando, and then Alex Gordon. Alcides Escobar, Chesler Cuthbert, and Drew Butera batting ninth. Well, and our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher is Josh Tomlin, a 31 year old right hander, going to make his fifth start. Against Kansas City this year, his record is 2-0, 242 earned run average. He won his first two games. His last two have been no decisions, although he's pitched very well against them. Won seven innings here in Kansas City, seven hits, one run. Another one uh, at home, six and two thirds at five. Dyson jumps on the first pitch, slams it to right field, and he's in the second base with a leadoff double. Thanks to the fact that Lonnie Chisenhall played the carom perfectly and he got a nice kick off the wall. Otherwise, that's an easy leadoff triple for Dyson. I was just going to say that that's three bags almost every day of the week with this guy running. But watch how Chisenhall gets to it and he plays the carom. It, it took a, just a great bounce off the, the cement part of that wall out there underneath the padding of that wall right to Chisenhall. So he will hold Dyson to a double his 14th. Whit Merrifield to the plate in at third as Ramirez on the cut of the grass. And Tomlin with a first pitch strike. Doesn't surprise you that Dyson went after that first pitch with Tomlin on the mound. They faced him enough this year. They know he's a strike thrower. They are not going to let him get ahead in the count and expand the zone. Kansas City a very aggressive offensive team. Airfield yanks it to left and Rajay Davis can't make the play scoring is Dyson in the second with an RBI double is Merrifield and the Royals lead it one to nothing. Rick I don't know that Rajay could have made the play anyway but it looked like at least initially he kind of got turned around. Yeah he got frozen I don't know if he picked it up he's got the glasses it's bright and it's sunny but you can see that ball was there and then he broke in and he didn't realize that ball was going over his head so not sure if he picked it up right off the bat. It looked like it could have been an out but it's back to back doubles and on three pitches Kansas City has a one nothing lead. And that will bring up Kenry's Morales two out of eight in the series. After a really slow start, Morales has been sensational for the Royals. Swinging the bat, following it back. 
He comes into this the final day of the season for Kansas City with 30 homers 93 runs batted in. A little high. And that's going to even the count of one and one. Wade Merrifield in scoring position. And that'll get Merrifield to third. Kipnis throws out Morales for the first out of the inning. Let's take a look at the Indians defense behind Tomlin today that is brought to you by Jeep in the outfield Davis is in left field Naquin in center Chiss and Hall over and right Ramirez at third Lindor at short Kipnis is in second Santana at first and Gomes doing the catching. The Indians will bring the infield in with one out on the runner at third and Salvador Perez licking his chops he is 15. For 26 in his career against Josh Tomlin. And of course, you always worry when you have a hitter at the plate, when you bring the infield in and a pitcher who throws primarily a cut fastball, that can lead to little blue pits off the end of the bat. Well, and the he way takes it's 0 2. This guy has hit Tom, and I wouldn't want to be an infielder having to come in here with one out because he has scorched it off Josh in his career. And this guy, as we well know, he swings at just about everything. High fastball popped him up. Good pitch. Is it deep enough? Tagging is Merrifield. Naquin makes the catch. He's throwing it home, and Merrifield slammed on the brakes. No play at the plate and there are two down. Well he got in front of uh, Perez and he elevated the fastball and he couldn't really drive it. You watch the sequence on this and, and you'll see a cutter away strike one good pitch away and Perez just took it then he went fastball away. Now he's going to elevate the fastball. He didn't let him extend the arms he popped it up not deep enough to where Naquin could make the play get it in Merrifield held that had to hold so a nice sequence there by Tom. Paulo Orlando as the infield backs up to normal depth bats with two down and that runner at third in Kansas City out to the early one nothing lead. And Orlando looks at a strike. Tomlin has thrown ten pitches nine strikes. And a strike over the inside corner. Jan Gomes, one of the best in the business, with just a very subtle movement of the glove. It's not a jerking motion, it's a matter of just catching it and just framing it enough to maybe get a pitch for your pitcher once in a while. That's another elevated fastball here. Popped him up back to our way. Oh, couldn't quite get it. Yeah. That was right in your hands. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's God. We're going to give you an error. <laughs> I never got leather on it. Arch. I want to see. I want to see if Andre has any uh, any call on that. He's not even paying attention to us. He says error. That's what he said. Chop foul. I don't think you got leather on it, Arch. So you got to. You can't give him an E on that. Oh, man. You're, you See, know, why here we like, go. Why you're, are you being so tough on it? You're Come like on. all the official scores out there. I expect this man to make it. He's at a I don't have a TV. I don't games. have a TV to see him reflect. I can barely hear you. Uh, yeah, uh, you're probably <laughs> sleeping down go? there anyway. He did not. What's <laughs> <laughs> I would have I would have had to dive and then you'd be working alone. <laughs> uh, my partner had 162 <laughs> games. That was that was about as close as we've had this I know. year. 
Got a late break on it. I've seen you make that play before. Sun was in my eyes. <laughs> Count remains one and two as Tomlin continues to pound the strike zone. 13 out of 15 in this opening frame have been strikes. Alo Orlando though down on the count putting up a tough at bat. And that's out of play. I see a guy in the upper deck he tried to go with a one handed play and that's, and that's a tough assignment right there. Yeah. They're all tough on the last day. Another one two offering. Jammed him right back nice to Tomlin. Pitch. And the inning is over. Kansas City gets on the board first after an inning. The Royals lead it one to nothing. Jose Ramirez will lead it off for the Indians. Ramirez comes into the final day batting 312. Jose Altuve will win the batting title. He comes into this day batting 338. Mookie Betts second. 18 points behind him. The Red uh, the Red Sox will more than likely finish with the two three and four best batting averages in the American League bets then Dustin Pedroia and David Ortiz. And we'll finish potentially just ahead of Miguel Cabrera and Mike Trout and then Jose Ramirez. Ripped. Oh, it's caught by Morales on one hop. He took a double away from him. I was just about to say Ramirez, two doubles behind David Ortiz for the league lead in that category. Well, just another line drive off the bat of Ramirez, and you can see Morales right there picked it up right off the ground. Glove head side. Bonnie Chisinau taking inside ball one. By the way, in the National League, the wild card spot comes down to the final day of the season with St. Louis needing a win against Pittsburgh, and then they would need a Giants loss. St. Louis scoreless with Pittsburgh in the second, but San Francisco out to a 2 0 lead over the Dodgers 
They're in the second inning now in San Francisco. Yeah, they're going for the sweep over the Dodgers the last three games of the year. Lonnie lifts a fly ball to left where Alex Gordon makes the catch two down. Our great clip of the year. The fantastic catch by Rajay Davis to end that Friday night game in Detroit. What a play he made, bobbling it, juggling it. No one was quite sure if he actually caught it. It turned into a game ending double play. Yeah, the kind of play that, you know, that when you're playing in the year they've had against Detroit, things like that happen. End the, end the game with a double play. Rajay Davis will win the stolen base title this year. 43 steals for Rajay. 13 ahead of Jose Altuve and Gerard Dyson, who are second. Two quick strikes. Harry Bay, Elmer Flick, George Case, and of course, Kenny Lofton. Broke his bat, popped it up, long run. And the shortstop Escobar puts it away. The Indians go in order. 1-0 Kansas City, middle of the second. Bad app. You can stay connected all season with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download the MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Josh Tomlin facing Alex Gordon here in the second, and the pitch up high ball one. Finds the inside corner to even the count. Ground ball with the shift on. Lindor has a long run to get to it, but throws him out one away. Let's go back to June the 4th. Francisco Lindor and Jason Kipnis. Actually, Jose Ramirez with some fancy teamwork. Love those uniforms there. That's the one they were wearing at home. What a play. Six, five, three. Alcides Escobar. You know, it'll be interesting to see uh, which shortstop wins the gold glove in this league this year Ooh, because man. there's so many of them. The reigning gold glove winner is stepping into the box right now. 
and you've got a number of other guys that could certainly you know take over not that Escobar hasn't deserved another one but we've watched uh, Lindor play every single day and he is certainly a candidate. Yeah that's going to be a tough one. Yes to, it uh, is. It's going to really be like decide. that every year you know when you think you go on to third or Jose Ramirez picks it clean and throws him out and don't be surprised if someday we're not talking about Jose Ramirez being a gold glove winner at third because he's got the hands of a middle infielder and the strong arm and he really has made even though he hasn't been there every day the whole season but since he's moved there on an everyday basis he's been nearly flawless and he's only going to get better the more games he plays there and feels more comfortable in that situation in, in that position two quick outs and Chesler Cuthbert to the plate. You can see Machado right up there, and he has, is probably the best without. Uh, well, and Bell, I see Beltre's name, and I can't <laughs> leave him out. I love that guy to watch him play third. The one-one, fair or not, and you learn this during your career. Offense does come into play when it comes to the Gold Glove Award. It's, yes, it does. Swing and a miss and it's two and two. Chesler Cuthbert has stepped in and done a remarkable job for the Royals this year. Taking over for Mike Moustakis. Broken bat. It gets by Tomlin but Kitten is there to clean it up. And the Royals go one two three. After two it's Kansas City one Cleveland nothing. Inventory for all postseason games very limited. The Indians encourage fans to purchase 2017 season tickets, and that's giving fans priority access to potential World Series tickets. Go to Indians.com postseason. Tyler Naquin will lead off the third for Cleveland. Naquin two for six in the series, enters the final day of the season right at 2.99. He's picked up a hit in three straight games. And that's a late call for a strike. 0 and 2. Naquin, then Jan Gomes and Carlos Santana for Cleveland here in the third. Pop back out of play. Oh, 
Ouch. And he hit him. Sure did. Came up and in. And the Indians get their leadoff man aboard the hard way. Well, Nagelin's had a pretty good year against Kansas City. They're trying, as, as I said, he's trying to make a conscious effort to go inside, and he just drilled him. It looked like in the back of the right arm. Yeah, Tyler will always have special memories when it comes to seeing the Royals. His first home run. Right. Came against Kansas City, and as you said, he's had a good year swinging the bat against the Royals. Tyler's hit 359 this year against KC. Yeah. Well, here's Jan Gomes. His first at bat since coming back. And he drives one to deep left field. Back is Gordon looking up. He's out of room. It's out of here. Off the back wall in the bullpen. Welcome back, Jan Gomes. How about that? Are you kidding me? And that was no cheapy, man. That thing. First swing coming back. That's got to be a fun trot for him. Nicely done. That's his ninth home run on the year. He hadn't played since July 17th. Well, boy, was that a fun run around the bases. Now, Carlos Santana taking a strike. Indians take a two to one lead on that home run by Jan Gomes and Rick. You have to wonder even with all the time he's missed if he doesn't just step right in and become a part of this postseason playoff roster. Well, I think it was a big step today to get him in that starting lineup and I, I think again it'll be important to see how he feels after today's game. But boy oh boy it couldn't have started any better than the way it has today for Jan Gomes. Santana called third strike. One down in the inning. Boy, did he jump on this pitch for me and Kennedy? Well, let's go. I mean, he gets that first pitch and he tried to just throw that fastball by him. He's been throwing a lot of them. It was down, though. And Jan likes the ball down and he was ready for it. He was dreaming of this pitch in this at bat. Let's go. Well, I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a guy just going up there and put a nice swing on it. It wasn't like he was trying to hit a home run or trying to do too much. Just no. Yeah, they're, those guys are thrilled to death. You're right. He was just happy to get a start, get back in there. Jason Kipnis swing and a miss. And it's 0 and 2. And after the home run, Gomes struck out Santana and he's gone to work here on Kipnis, who doubled off the top of the wall in right field his first time up. And he hit Kipnis. <laughs> So the second That's Indian a, reaches in the inning. Well that was another plus that we didn't even talk about with the guy getting hit in front of you. You do damage on the very next pitch to hit one out and make it a two run so that makes it hurt the pitcher and it would be nice to do it again. Well it's going to bring up Francisco Lindor as we go downstairs to Andre what do you think is he uh, has he got a shot in this postseason roster he does have a shot now Tito said before the game that what happened today wouldn't play into it he had in his mind what he wanted to do then I asked him how many at bats he would give him he said I'm gonna give him one at bat and then we'll go off of that he was just cleared to hit yesterday I think we're gonna see him hit again guys today <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you he's hitting again I don't have to go down to the rest of the end of the uh, end of the dugout to find that out uh, I obviously that swing helps but I think Tito wants to see him get a couple good swings before he figures out exactly what he wants to do Oh yeah, but that didn't hurt. <laughs> but you should have saw Tito's face when that ball went out of the ballpark. You could not have scripted it any better. Runner goes. Kipnis is off. Lindor shoots it to left, but it's high in the air he for Gordon. Know. Kipnis doesn't know where it's at. He still doesn't know. And Gordon no. guns it all oh, the way man. back to first for a double play. No, Morales can't come up with the throw. Kipnis got. I'll tell you what. He never picked it up, and the throw hit Kipnis. That's how he was safe. He's looking at the Sarbaugh. He never saw the baseball and I mean he was decoyed by the middle infielders and he never picked it up. He said he was looking over at Mike Sarbaugh for something but watch this here comes a throw it's going to hit Kip and if it doesn't it's a double play. Ah, I got gotcha, you. Yeah. 
And now watch. He sees he's looking at third base. He doesn't know where it's at. He's clueless. Go back. Well, he gets back in there. The ball hit him. He's safe. Two down for Mike Napoli. Outside corner called strike. It's like taking the hidden ball trick to a whole nother level. Well, you see, <laughs> both middle infielders decoyed, but I mean, he's a middle infielder, so he should know what they're trying to do but he just never picked up the baseball he was off and running on that pitch stealing so he never peeked back to see where it was put in play nor did he find it he probably thought it was a foul ball happily sends one sky high foul out of play to the left yeah when you when you lose sight of the object the baseball it's a bad feeling when you're out there running the bases. Now the 0-2. A little low and away. Right back over our heads to the upper deck. And Napoli stays alive. Mike has walked 77 times this year, which is 10th most in the American League. But also on the other end of the second uh, spectrum, he has struck out the second most times. 193 punch outs, only Chris Davis of Baltimore. Who's gone over the 200 mark with 217 strikeouts this year? Kipnis, a good lead at first. And a 2 2 fouled right back. Atlanta got a run in the first. They lead Detroit one nothing. Braves batting in the second. Going away. Toronto Boston they are scoreless in the third and Baltimore in front of the Yankees three nothing. They're in the fourth inning. I see where the Giants are winning five nothing too over in the National League over the Dodgers. Now they've jumped out. So if they win they're in right uh, St. Louis is a game behind yes. them. Yes St. Louis needs a Giants loss. And they've got to beat Pittsburgh they're scoreless with the Bucks in the third. Runner goes and the pitch fouled back out of play. Napoli's falling off a lot of pitches here he elevated the fastball on him the last time. Kipnis is going another foul back. In that Giants game, Buster Posey with another RBI single, and then Denard Span a two run triple, making it 5 0 Giants in the second. Here, the Indians have taken a 2 1 lead. And Mike Napoli with a 3 2 count. Kipnis, who has been running on the previous 3 2 pitches, will be off again, but they're keeping an eye on him. 
Ian Kennedy has made 50 pitches already. 38 of those have been strikes. Again, Kipnis is off, and Napoli sends a towering fly ball to right center. In comes Dyson and Gordon. Dyson makes the catch. That'll end the inning. But what a return for Jan Gomes to the starting lineup. First pitch he sees, he sends it into the bullpen, and the Indians lead it 2-1. to one. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Glad to have you with us. The Indians lead the Royals two to one as we roll to the bottom half of the third. Drew Butera to lead it off for Kansas City. And Josh Tomlin with a fastball in there for strike one. Butera two for six in the series. Hit outside, one on one. Down the right field line, but foul. Josh Tomlin is set up to pitch game three of the division series for the Indians. Yesterday, Trevor Bauer got the start for the tribe. He pitched well, but he did give up a couple of runs late in the game that allowed the Royals to get back in it and when he was taken out of the game Terry Francona was went back to the dugout to tell Bauer the good news that he would be starting game one of the division series <laughs> in hindsight Tito probably should have told him before he left the mound because he said I went up to tell him in the dugout and he was in the middle of beating up the water cooler so he said so much for that feel good moment. But Bauer has pitched well for the Indians this year. And he's a guy that can. You know pitch on short rest that to he me can pitch almost whenever you need him to so. I think it makes sense because your game one starter will have to come back if needed. On short rest and they didn't want to do that with Corey Kluber. With the injury that he's been dealing with that makes all the sense to me you know and if you go. You're going to have to win on the road anyway. Unless we get home field advantage they could win the first two and then you wouldn't have to you know you'd have five. But for, it makes sense. For Kluber. Unfortunately that's just the way it was set up. In, in a perfect world he would be your number one guy and he'd be able to come back on short rest. And Tito said Corey was fighting him on it. He wanted to pitch game sure. one. I mean that's I mean, you're the ace of the staff that's a. That's a badge of honor you wear proudly but. Terry. Finally said I just had to take it out of his hands that you're you're not going to start well uh, and I mean you look at the other side of that coin too with Boston and I think Porcello is going to end up getting game one yes it was you know, announced, officially. It's announced and, and price is going to be and they paid price to be the number one starter but he's not going to get that nod because Porcello's had such a good year and he's only lost one game in Fenway Park this year and it was a one nothing game.
Chop to first Santana will go to second. There's one return throw close but Dyson with that great speed able to beat it out. You can't do any better than what the Indians did right there. It's just. That's what speed do. Arch. Well it wasn't hit hard enough just a one hopper and it gave him enough time and I give Tomlin credit he was in position he was at first base. It actually looks like the first baseman's there so he hustled his way over there. And uh, there you go Thursday game one starters Rick Porcello Trevor Bauer. Porcello's had a heck of a year for the Red Sox. I think it, yeah. now that it's all pretty much said and done I think he's going to win the Cy Young Award. I think Zach Britton will get some votes the closer for Baltimore but I think when it's all added up. Well if you had a vote who would you vote for. I think I'd go Porcello. Yeah I, I know I would that that would be my pick. Whit Merrifield doubled in a run his first time up. While objectivity may be blurred a bit I I was still pulling for Kluber thinking maybe Porcello would stumble in his last couple of starts and maybe Corey could get to that 20 win mark and maybe sway some voters but I think Porcello is more or less locked it up. Well Kluber had that chance for number 19 before he had to come out after four innings with that injury yeah. and that's the unfortunate thing he could very well he would have had a lot of votes there getting number 19. But he knows what it's like to win one. He's been there. And now he and his teammates get a chance to go and fight for the biggest prize of them all. Right. That's the bottom line. Get the big prize. Up high with it, two and one. No score with the Red Sox and the Blue Jays there in the third. Baltimore leading the Yankees 3 1 in New York. If there was ever a pitcher that you want to hit and run on this is the guy to do it with would be Josh Tomlin because he throws so many strikes. The Kansas City a team that swings the bat very well you have speed on the bases with one out here. You could also let him go and try and steal a base as well but Tomlin does a nice job of controlling the running game. Again if you join us late the scenarios in play today the most simplest path for Cleveland a win today by the Indians and wins by both Toronto and Baltimore would render tomorrow a moot point they would not have to go and play that game. The two one up high three balls and a strike. Because that would secure home field for the Indians and it would eliminate Detroit from the wild card race. Detroit must win and get help to still have a chance at the wild card. Runner goes 3-1 to center. Naquin plays it on a bounce. On his way to third is Dyson. That's the tying run. And the Royals have runners at the corners with one out. Well, Dyson was off and, and, and running. And this ball hit the center field. A, a, a sort of a soft line drive. Naquin coming in trying to decoy Dyson, but that didn't work. He's going to get to third base. So now they have first and third and just one out. With Morales up at the plate. Love well, to get a ground ball here. The good news is you've got a great double play candidate because right. when he hits the ball hard, it's. If it's at an infielder he doesn't run that well he's hit into a team high 19 double plays this year. But the bad news is he hits it so hard that if it's not right at somebody it's through for a hit. Yeah and Tomlin's more of a fly ball pitcher than he is a ground ball guy. Well, I want to send along uh, some congratulations to Frank and Pauline Bochenik celebrating their 64th anniversary Frank Pauline congratulations and a happy birthday to 
Susie Adamak, wife of Tom, fantasy camper. Happy birthday, Susie. Yeah, happy birthday and happy anniversary to the Boschenics. Dear friends, I'm sure they're watching the ball game. Tomlin's 0 1. Low. Even though Tomlin is a fly ball pitcher, six of the seven outs recorded so far have been on the ground. And that's what he's looking for right here, trying to get Morales to maybe roll over on one. Just a little bit outside, and the count is two and one. Got to first, it. got it. Santana to second. There's one. Back to first. Yeah. Inning ending. Double play. How about that? Nice. Tomlin gets the two for one ball, and Santana started it with a perfect strike to Lindor. The inning is over. The Indians lead it two to one. Of this season. You weren't too excited there, wow. were you? Just one of those things you don't expect. You don't, expect. You don't yeah. expect to see an inside the park home run, especially to well, end the game. Well, when Upton went down, too, when he was backing yeah. up over there, he slipped. That enabled him to round third and head for home. And back to back game winners for Naquin on that one. Well, here's Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez leading off the fourth with Cleveland leading it two to one. And that's inside one on one. Foul. That's the thing about baseball, too. Whether you're a fan or an announcer, you tend to watch specific things once a play begins. It's hard to just sit back and watch the entire field all at one time. And I didn't initially see Upton slip. I was trained on Mike Sarbaugh and Naquin as he was getting to third. And I didn't realize that Upton had slipped. Yeah. Or I wouldn't have been as surprised to see Sarbaugh waving him home. But when when I saw Mike waving him, I thought, holy mackerel, this is a <laughs> roll of the dice right here. And then when I looked back to see Upton kind of sitting on his backside, that's when I realized he's going to score easily at that point.
there have been. And I suppose this is par for the course when you've got a team that wins a division and more than 90 games during a season. You have plenty of memorable moments that you look back on. But this team has certainly had their fair share. Well, 11 walk off wins. Um, and all of them coming from June 1st on. Ramirez has a base hit and a hard line drive into right field to lead off this fourth inning. Look back. This is the play. The inside the park home run. At first, Tyler and myself thought it was going to be just out of the park. But then it hit off the wall and he really kicked it into gear. And right here, I'm watching Naquin, and I didn't see Upton fall. And <laughs> And then the mad dash for home where he almost fell down coming around third. And Sarbaugh, of course, his job at third base is to keep one eye on the runner and the other eye on what's going on behind him. And the minute he saw Upton slip, he thought it was worth taking the chance. And it certainly was. Yep, back to back walk offs for Naquin. Good job by Mike Sarbaugh. You know, and three of the Indians' walk-offs ended three-game losing streaks at that point when we were home. And the Indians are still the only team and will be the only team this year that has never lost four games in a row, which I think is incredible. Live ball to center field. Dyson will make the catch one away. Jan Gomes delivered the first walk off of the year against Texas and that avoided a big sweep there. Yes it did that that was a that they were on a three game losing streak. They were playing Texas and they were off to a horrendous uh, home stand. But uh, that was the start of it and they came right back the next night against Kansas City because Texas was leaving town and got their second one and boy that's when it all started. It's going to bring up Rajay Davis with one on. And one out here in the fourth, and the Indians leading this game two to one. Ian Kennedy has pitched well, has struck out a pair. This ball in the air to right field, Orlando. We'll grab it for out number two. You know, as we bring in Andre not downstairs, we always talk about a team finding that level of consistency. And for me, that's what that says when you don't lose. More than three in a row all season long. That that speaks to that level of maintaining consistency. This morning, Tito Francona says that's what's made him the happiest about this team. As a matter of fact, he said he's extremely happy that they haven't lost more than three in a row. He says that tells you all he needs to know about this team. And the reason he said that, he said in baseball seasons, you're going to get punched in the stomach. And he said the one thing about this team is when they get punched in the stomach, he goes, you know, you know, our dugout always stays. And there's always noise. Guys always keep pushing each other. He said it's easy to lose three games, four games in a row and just get caught up in a moment. He also said it's nice to have a guy like Corey Kluber as a hammer and the other pitchers that they've had as hammers not to let that happen. But, you know, all season long, we've kind of asked Tito what has made him happiest about this team. And he's talking about base running, things of that nature. But tonight, this morning, he finally said he goes not losing four in a row to him tells you all you want to need to know about the Cleveland Indians. Well that that is very impressive. Yeah I mean think about it. 162 games and you've never lost four in a row. You know you got to win. You have to win. And we went back and looked uh, at one point earlier this year at some of the teams that have had remarkable seasons and they all had losing streaks that were longer than three games. That, uh, to me be, uh, being a former player that's incredible. You're able to shake hands. The more you get to shake hands, the better it is. I fly to left. Gordon in near the line. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth in Kansas City. It's Cleveland 2, KC 1.
by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Michael Brantley, who fought his tail off to try and get back this year, ultimately had to have another surgery procedure done. And he is hoping that he will be ready for spring training. Salvador Perez will lead off for the Royals here in the fourth. And he swats this one into center. Naquin can't get to it. And Perez has a leadoff single. Off the end of the bat, another one that just bloops in front of Naquin. But when you've had the kind of success Perez has had against Tomlin, they all seem to fall. Fifth hit for Kansas City. And it's the third time they have had their leadoff man aboard out of the first four innings. Trying to bunt, but Orlando bunts it back to the screen. That certainly would come as a surprise to see Orlando lay one down here. Yeah I, I don't understand that you're hitting fifth in the lineup. You got Perez on that's a very slow runner. It's the last game of the year. Swing the bat. He swung at that time. And was out in front of it. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Josh Tomlin out of 47 pitches thrown 34 of those have been strikes. He has been on the attack from the get go. And he changed speeds and had Orlando fooled badly, striking him out one down. It'll be the first strikeout of the day for Tomlin. It'll be our Circle K strikeout. Really slowed it down on him, threw him the nice 12 to 6 curveball. Got him out in front and got out number one here in the fourth. Alex Gordon grounded out in the second inning. Now yesterday it was cloudy most of the day here in Kansas City. So I don't know. At game time yesterday how much the shadows had an impact but in the next. 20 minutes or so they're definitely going to come into play here. Once that hitter was completely consumed by the shadows. Rajay runs this down. Two away. Tune into the Golf Zone tonight and our PGA Pro Jimmy Hanlon. We'll talk uh, about your game and the Ryder Cup. Boy, has it been an exciting weekend of golf between the Americans and the Europeans. Inside the Golf Zone with Jimmy, presented by American Eagle Mortgage and Farm and Guard tonight at 8 on Fox Sports Ohio. Two away for Alcides Escobar, who grounded out his only time up. to third and a great catch by Ramirez. That was a line drive scorched. It looked like it was headed to left field, but Ramirez cut it off, and that ends the inning. Through four, it's Cleveland two, Kansas City one.
Football is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. Boy, you can't get a much better day than the one we have here in Kansas City. 73 at game time. Mostly sunny skies, perfect afternoon. Yes, it is. Now it might start to get a little tougher for the hitter. Not quite yet, but as I said before, about the next 15 to 20 minutes. That ball almost hit Gomes. I don't know how it missed him. Now when Gomes got hit by the pitch on the day before he was supposed to be activated, it wasn't the bottom hand, but that top right hand that for the brunt of the pitch thrown by the pitcher. You know, and, and in some cases, maybe that's better because that bottom hand, you know, the way it wraps around the bottom of the bat can be a little more troublesome for a hitter. Yeah, well, that's your lead hand, most important part of it. Soft liner to third, one away. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Kansas City struck first in the first with Merrifield's RBI double to deep left, plating Gerard Dyson. But the Indians came back in the third. Jan Gomes, his first at bat back, first pitch he saw, two run homer to the bullpen in left. And that's where it stands now as we play here in the fifth inning with one out and Carlos Santana to the plate. Santana is five for ten in the series now. It's always liked hitting in this ballpark. Here, Minnesota. The first big bounce for Morales. He'll take it himself. And there are two down. When you look at this lineup. Certainly it's a lineup that has had contributions from a number of different people. Obviously Napoli has had the big year with the power numbers the homers the RBI Santana's had a fantastic year with 34 homers a new career high he's up over 30 doubles. Jason Kipnis 40 doubles now on the year. Rick when you forecast what will have to happen for the Indians to be successful offensively in the postseason is there any one player that figures more prominently than another. No, I think they all just have to go out there and do their own thing man. This is a team you know you got to take walks you can't pull that pressure and put it on yourself. This team has done very well this year just staying within the moment just moving runners along. I, I think if there's anything they're going to have to move runners better than what they have done this year as far when you get into a close game and sacrificing them and trying to get them over and get them in. You know these guys that they know they know what their job is what they have to do get on base and make things happen. Hitness swats one to left. Gordon makes the catch the Indians go in order. We go to the bottom of the fifth 2 1 Cleveland.
access to Tribe Rewards, and today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Tribe Town. Visit Indians.com season tickets for more details. James McCann has hit an opposite field home run. And the Tigers have tied the Braves 1-1 there in the fifth. Almost 50,000 people are on hand at Turner Field for the final game ever at that ballpark. And they're seeing a whale of a pitching duel. Justin Verlander getting the start for Detroit 33 and 16 in his career in regular season games played in September or October. Yeah. That's I think he's always done well too in interleague play. Elsewhere Toronto Boston still scoreless in the fourth. I drive deep left center back and gone. Chesler Cuthbert just does clear the wall and the Royals have come back to tie it at two his 12th home run of the year. Did that hit the top of the wall and bounce over or did it get a little farther away. It was hit deep to left center field. Let's take a look at our Indiana Wesleyan University pitch tracker and that's a change up down middle of the plate. And he gave a pretty good ride. Let's see if it hits right on right top on and top of bounces think. over. Yes it did. Right on top of that wall for his 12th home run and it's a tie ball game. Up high ball one to Drew Butera. And I thought it was supposed to be getting tougher with those shadows. You're not supposed to hit that, are you? No. That is the 36 home run allowed by Josh this year. But the solo home runs you can live with and oh, he yeah. can too. Oh yeah. He went through a stretch there though where there were two and three runners coming at a pretty good clip and that was costly for him. I'll tell you the Royals are going to have a good problem next year and that is what to do with Chester Cuthbert. Moustakas you figure will be back. He signed yeah. to a long term deal. He's the third baseman. You've also got Whit Merrifield who's had a terrific year yes. at second base. You've had some guys step up this year for him. Uh, Orlando's been one. Cuthbert, as you say, he's a rookie. He just did his 12th home run. He has 46 RBIs, 28 doubles, and he's a very good defender at third base that we've witnessed throughout the course of the year. And as you mentioned, Merrifield, who's played second and third for him, another guy that's yes, they, they've uh, found out a little bit about their organization, even though they did have some tough injuries to overcome. Big part of Kansas City is, is going to be starting pitchers. That's the thing they really need. The 1 1. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there again, you could be looking at guys who are potential trade pieces to try and acquire something that they need in the offseason. Sure, Dayton Moore will be very active. You know, you've got a good young core that's together. You want to try to keep it together as long as you can. The one two. Chopper just by Tomlin. Kipnis with a good play to retire Dyson two down. Fans want to remind you to stay right here throughout the postseason for all the best hometown coverage of the Indians throughout the playoffs. Drennan live will be on the air right up until the first pitch. Andre and myself will be with the Indians. We'll have interviews and analysis you won't see anywhere else. And then right after the ball game, turn it right back to Sports Time Ohio. Rick will be in studio along with Al and Jensen. So everything you need will be right here on Sports Time Ohio. Whit Merrifield is two for two an RBI double in the first and a single in the third. Ramirez with another fine defensive play and the inning is over. 
but Chesler Cuthbert homers to left and we are tied at two through five. Francisco Lindor will lead off the sixth when we come back to Kansas City. June second, Francisco Lindor tripled beyond the diving Paulo Orlando to tie the game, and then Mike Napoli with a fly ball that ended it as Lindor scored from third. It was the second walk off of the year for the Indians. They came on back to back nights. Francisco Lindor leading off, taking outside ball one. He's 0 for 2 here this afternoon. Matt Wieters doing a lot of damage in the Orioles final game. A pair of two run homers. And Baltimore leads New York 5 to 1 in the sixth. Lindor sends a high drive deep center back is Dyson still going back with his back to home plate. He <laughs> makes the catch. Are you kidding me. He didn't want to look into the sun so he turned around and made that tough play look very easy. I thought that ball was going to get out of here the way he went back after it never turned around to look watch put his back down and he's looking over his head. How about that play. You don't think that takes some practice right there. He never looked back into the sun. Beautiful catch. The only other guy I saw do that was a shortstop named Omar Vizquel. Try doing that in your backyard let alone in a big league ballpark. That's as you say that's a lot harder than he just made it look. That's why he do what he do. That's what <laughs> speed do. <laughs> Mike Napoli 0 for 2. And it's outside. Von Travis is homered for Toronto. Solo shot off David Price in the Blue Jays lead Boston 1 0 in the fifth. Again, Detroit needs a win today. And then they need either an Orioles loss or a Blue Jays loss to force that makeup game tomorrow against Cleveland. Inside. The Indians need a win today. And a Red Sox loss to end the season and make that game a moot point. Napoli is rug up by home plate umpire Bill Miller. He doesn't like it. Third strikeout for Ian Kennedy, two down in the inning. T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Mike Napoli's 34 homers most since Pronk back in 06. His RBI total the most since Victor Martinez. 
back in 07. Ian Kennedy has retired eight in a row. Ramirez led off the fourth with a single, the last man to reach for the tribe. Find a short caught by Escobar, and the inning is over. 2 2, middle of the sixth. We're not sure exactly what happened, but James McCann, it looked like, had homered to tie that game with the Braves, and then they changed the score. So we're not sure if that was one of those deals where they went to replay and reviewed it. Huh. But the run has been taken off the board. One nothing. Tigers still trail. Fly ball center field. Naquin coming in, makes the catch, and Kendrys Morales is retired for out number one here in the sixth inning. Defensively now Chris Jimenez has taken over for Jan Gomes behind the plate. Ooh, nice breaking ball. Change of speeds right there to have Perez out in front. The 0 2, bang. You know, I'm, that may be tough to see now. It looked like he had a tough time seeing it. Two down, second strikeout for Toblin. Back to the studios for an in game update. Here's Alpalowski.
All right, thanks, Al. Heck of a game going on in Fenway. Sanchez, the guy they're trying to protect and push back because of innings. Here's a liner toward left. And racing over to make the catch is Rajay Davis and Josh Tomlin breezes through the sixth. 2-2 two -two as we head to inning number seven. is brought to you by Ford built Ford tough by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk proud partner of the Cleveland Indians call 1-800-ELK-OHIO and by Adventure Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Inning number seven here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. And it's a 2 2 ball game as Lonnie Chisenhall will lead off for Cleveland. Lonnie takes a called strike. Daniel Nava has taken over at first base for Kenry Morales. It's fouled the first base side. 0 oh and 2. Rolls it to third base. Cuthbert will throw out Chisholm all one away. Well, unforgettable games, undeniable greatness, and unstoppable drama. The 2016 postseason begins October 4th. Just visit Indians.com postseason for the full schedule. Rajay trying to bunt his way aboard, and it will trickle foul. Again this ball stayed on that line and hugged it for quite a while and eventually it rolled foul so those lines are tilted a little bit to foul territory. We saw one the other night going down the third baseline that fell off the grass and went foul on Friday night. That was the swinging uh, bunt I guess you could call it from Jose Ramirez. Then came back up and hit the next high fastball down the right field line. Rajay Davis fouls that off. 
We're in the on deck circle in front of the Royals dugout. Upstairs with a fastball that just took off on him. Ball weakly hit to second base, and there are two down. Tyler Naquin coming up with Chris Jimenez moving to the on deck circle. One was hit by a pitch and then scored in front of the home run by Gomes in the third. That gave the Indians a two to one lead at the time. Kansas City has since tied the game. And a broken bat bouncer. That bat snapped in half. Kennedy breezing through the seventh. He has retired 12 in a row. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Earlier on the road trip, Monday night in Detroit, the Indians officially clinched the American League Central Division title. The eighth time they've been able to make that claim, touching off a wild celebration in the Motor City as the Indians now can uh, Get ready to open the division series against the Boston Red Sox. The only question still to be answered where will that be? Will it be back in Cleveland or will it be in Boston? It will start Thursday night. 
And right now we are no clearer to an answer than we were when we came on the air because this game is tied and Boston currently losing at home to Toronto. So that part of the equation is good. The Indians need a Boston loss and a win here today. And that clinches it. They would go back home and open the playoffs Thursday night against the Red Sox. It's only a one nothing Toronto lead. But Aaron Sanchez is throwing a no hitter for the yeah. Blue Jays. So right not like the Red Sox have actually Baltimore they're doing their thing five yeah. to one but you know that's the big game you're right and, and still in Atlanta it's still a one nothing game yeah. and a good pitchers matchup. Yeah Julio, Julio Tehran. Yeah he has shut out the Tigers through six. Justin Verlander has given up only one run. It came in the first on a sacrifice fly. That has been it down there. 2 2. Down in the dirt. Rick, kind of give me an example, an idea for the Royals coming into this game. Certainly, you know, they're a team that. Has great professionalism, great ability. They're the defending world champions. But the facts are facts. They're out of it. This game means really nothing to them other right. than personal pride, that right. professionalism right. we talked right. to. When you go into a game like this on the last day of the season, it's understandable that your mind's kind of in two different places before the game begins. You're thinking about packing up your stuff, you're thinking about catching a flight you're thinking about where you're going to start the offseason tomorrow and then you're also thinking about we got a game to play today once the game starts are you able to separate and compartmentalize or do those thoughts start creeping into your head during the game as well now, you know what it does let me see that first fastball I see and I'm getting after it guys are swinging the bat that's why there's no walks today you know there's not many strikeouts they're getting pitches to put in play yeah I mean you go out there and you do the best you can you can concentrate on the game there's plenty enough time to to do what you have to do. And I'm sure this is around all of baseball all the teams that are out of it. I mean they're not going to just walk up there and just try and hit the first pitch and make it out. You're going to try and get a hit. You're going to I mean you have pride. You, you get you play till that 162 is over and then you can do whatever you want for the next four or five months. Two quick strikes on Escobar. Hey it's not tense to where they have to win. You know what I'm saying. But the Indians, they they could they need a win. They want to win, but it, they seem pretty relaxed too. They're, yep. they're do, they have the same approach the Royals do in this game, and they they need to win a heck of a lot more than Kansas City does. And Escobar out looking, and I don't want to make a bigger deal about this and make it sound like it's impossible, but I do think the shadows play a role. I agree. Not a big one maybe not a huge one but enough of a role that you're seeing hitters maybe just get caught in between a little bit at times as we say it's a little tougher that's a cutter but it's tougher to pick up the spin on the baseball when you've got going from sun to shade you know you can see right there I'll tell you what I'd love for anybody to try and grab a bat and go in that little white box and see the baseball clearly you know and, and everything's going to be close and these guys both these pitchers are throwing they're pounding the strike zone. Yeah it's not like these guys are, are giving hitters much of a chance they're attacking they're, they're going right at them. They're attacking they're throwing strikes and they're staying out of the middle of the plate the home run that Tomlin gave up it was a change up middle of the plate it got hit the home run that Kennedy gave up it was down for Jan Gomes middle of the plate it got hit. But other than that you stay out of the middle of the plate you may give up a hitter to here. But the defense just make your plays and move along. Let's go. And that's what they have been doing as Josh Tomlin has now set down nine in a row.
copy of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Josh Tomlin and Ian Kennedy have combined to retire the last 21 hitters in a row in this ballgame. Leading off for the Indians here in the eighth inning. Batting for Chris Jimenez will be Coco Crisp. And he swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Foul ground. Escobar, the shortstop, makes the catch. One quick out. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Number one hitters all time. Talking about leadoff hitters in the history of the game. The Indians have combined for 30 homers, 30 steals, 93 walks out of the leadoff spot. Not too shabby, huh? Not the 08 Indians. Brady Sizemore and company. Carlos Santana looks at a breaking ball that went down and in. He's 0 for 3 today. Well, Kennedy knows this is the guy he has to be careful with when you're just rearing back and throwing fastball. So he started him off breaking ball. He knows Santana can get on it. Kennedy as well has given up 33 homers this year. Up until last year, he had never given up. I mean, uh, last start against the Indians I should say they were all two run and solo jobs there's not a three run homer or grand slam against him on the year out of his 33 homers so that's pretty impressive in its own right he's been very good uh, since August 1st with runners in scoring position it's tough to get a hit off him. I know his record is just 11 and 10 but he's uh, put up some pretty good innings for Kansas City. He's been that guy that can go out there and give you a lot of innings. Low ball four. Santana walks for the 99th time this year. The first walk of the ball game and that snaps a string of 13 in a row retired by Ian Kennedy. It'll bring up Jason Kipnis. Who is one for two today. The attendance here this afternoon 29,475 the Royals have drawn more than two and a half million fans to the ballpark this year. It's their second highest attendance total in franchise history second only to last year. Yeah that's well you see what winning does it yeah. breaks those people to the seats. Back to back years in the World Series. They want to see good baseball. Rip right down the right field line. That's headed for the corner. Santana's off and running. Orlando digs it out and he gets it to the cutoff man. And Carlos has to stop at third. Jason Kipnis with his second double of the day. Number 41 on the year. And the Indians have second and third with one out now for Francisco Lindor. That's just a little unfortunate here. That ball hits that cement underneath and it came right back to him. I was hoping it wrapped around a little bit and stayed under that padding there. It's very it similar to the kick that Lonnie got earlier it. in the I game. I know it. It, it, it. They would have been triple or Santana would have been able to come around to score. But the good kicks, we've seen two of them today. Two good kicks for the defenders out in right field. A lot of times if that hits that padding underneath that lip, it'll just keep continue to uh, work its way around that curve out there. But yeah, we saw that Friday night in the series opener where it hit and Almonte had a tough time waiting. He had to wait for yes. it to come all the way all around. The, yes, he did. Joaquin Soria is getting ready for KC in the bullpen, but they're going to stick with Ian Kennedy for now. Lindor will be the batter. He is 0 for 3. He has flied out all three times. And you take a fly ball yeah, here to yeah. just get that run home from third. Well, he's the king of the sacrifice fly. When you look at it, Lindor has 14 on the year, which leads the league. Kansas City brings the infield in. And a swing and a miss at a breaking ball. See, so just got one the same way with Dyson today. And it was a double instead of a triple, and they both come right back to him. You're fortunate when that happens. 
<laughs> Let's do it. Right field. Orlando there to make the catch. Tagging is Santana. He's coming home. Orlando's throw. Not in time. And the Indians take the lead three to two. The sack fly king. He gets his 15th and he got enough of it. Orlando was just airing it out. He was throwing it all the way. He made it close. But the tribe takes the lead. RBI number 78 for Lindor. And number 60 on the on the year for the tribe as a team. 60 sacrifice flies. That leads the league. And Lindor with 15 of them. So he has 25% of them. Mike Napoli takes down low ball one. And a fastball strike over the outside corner. Fouled back. And Napoli trying to battle his way from behind down 0 2. Again, it's fouled out of play. Andrew Miller getting loose in the Cleveland bullpen. Two down on the 2 2 count for Napoli with a runner at third. Indians up a run. And there's a long fly foul down the left side. You know, I heard a number yesterday that just made me sit there and scratch my head for a second. The Indians this year have 13 pinch hits. The Cardinals. Have I think it was 13. 17 pinch hit home runs. They set the record oh, with 15. Ridiculous. I think they have more than that now. Yeah. Think about that. They're ridiculous. Upstairs, full count. Yeah, they were hitting, uh, their pinch hitters were hitting 300 at one time. I don't know if it <laughs> continues, if it has continued like that, but they were like off the charts. And Napoli draws a walk and that might be it for Ian Kennedy as Ned Yost is coming up out of the dugout. Ian Kennedy's day is over after one hundred and ten pitches. He pitched a solid ball game. He retired 13 in a row when he got Coco Crisp to start this eighth inning. But then he walked Santana. Kipnis doubled. Lindor break the tie with a sack fly to right. Now after the walk to Napoli the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. Kennedy gets a nice hand from the crowd. Soria will be in when we return.
Joaquin Soria on for Kansas City. Indians have runners first and third, two down in the batter is Jose Ramirez as he looks at ball one. He's the fifth best hitter in the American League this year with runners in scoring position, batting 357. And he is one for three this afternoon with a base hit back in the fourth inning. There's a strike from Sori to the outside corner to even it up. Smothered by Butera. Ramirez taking a strike. <laughs> Chopper foul, and that's up the first base side. Base hit here would be very nice. A little insurance out there on third base with Kipnis. He got him to go fish. Ramirez chases one and strikes out to end the inning. But the Indians storm back to regain the lead. Kipnis with a double, Lindor brings them home, 3-2 Cleveland. Josh Tomlin back out here for the Indians to work the bottom of the eighth inning. Tribe bullpen is busy. Roberto Perez now taking over behind the plate. It could be that Tomlin's only on to face the right hand and hitting Butera. I agree with you there. But he's only at 83 pitches, so we shall see. Yeah, well, Josh has been in total command today. He's thrown. Just a ton of strikes. 62 of his 84 pitches have been strikes. Out of play. But when you got that big left hander down in the bullpen, I'm sorry, you got to go get him when you have the one run lead. And they need that. The Indians need the win today. 
Well, Terry's pretty consistent with that. If he gets Miller up, he's coming, he's coming in. in the game. Absolutely. He'll have his walking shoes on very soon. Outside, try to get him to chase. No thought of that for Butera. That well out of the ball, out of the uh, strike zone in the other batter's box. Butera singled in the third, fly to center his last time up. Squib gets by Tomlin, but look at him alertly go to the bag and take the feed for out number one. You know, he did a great job. He wanted to get that ball, and then he would have went all the way to first base. But what he did, he couldn't get there, so he's just going to cover first base. That's your job. Santana came over to get it well done, Josh. Uh, a great start, his four straight starts, and out comes Tito, and he's going to make that move that we just talked about. In comes Miller. Seven Miller and a third innings for Tomlin, two runs on six hits. No surprise that Tomlin did not walk a batter. Struck out three and was nearly flawless on this, his final start before the postseason begins. Timeout in Kansas City, the left-hander Andrew Miller is coming on. Tomlin with another sterling performance here this afternoon hoping for his 13th win of the year. But more importantly he can't wait to start the postseason game that awaits him and the Indians. Yeah I'll tell you what Josh Tomlin that's his fifth start against Kansas City this year. Billy Burns pinch hitting for Gerard Dyson fouls one off down the right side. You know I'm looking at his numbers too Matt and in, in his five starts three times he has allowed just one run against Kansas City. Today he has allowed two and his very first start he allowed four but they had five runs he got the win in that ball game so he's looking to go three and zero against Kansas City this year. Andrew Miller pounds the strike zone it's 0 and 2. Billy Burns got a piece of that to stay alive. Andrew Miller and the rest of the Indians bullpen charged with holding a one run lead. They've got five outs to get. Yep. Couldn't pull the trigger and Burns. Strikes out on that slow outside hook. Two down, and we go down to Andre Not for the latest on the Indians injury front. Well, Danny Salazar, we're still figuring out when he will throw next. 
Uh, he's going to throw, though. But Mickey Calloway, before the game, says right now he's still in the mix to make the ALDS roster spot. He says if things stay the way that they've gone, he will be on it. Also today, Corey Kluber threw his first mound session. All went well, so he should be slated to go for game two. Also, if Jan Gomes does make that roster that we talked about a little bit earlier, obviously he's one for two today in today's game. Terry Francona says he most likely would carry three catchers. Just something to keep okay. in your back pocket going forward. Andre, didn't they say that Salazar would throw a simulated on Monday, though? It was talked about Monday, but with our schedule uh, in flux right now, they don't want to say exactly when it's going to be. Gotcha. I just asked Danny. He shook his head. He will throw tomorrow or Tuesday, one way or the other, for a bullpen session. Thank Thanks, you Bob. for the update. We go now to the ninth. The Indians up 3-2. to two. I'm actually surprised that number's not a little bit higher. 11 and 7, well, Division Series home field that's, advantage. That goes to show you it's the center of the diamond that dictates. Hopped up on the left side of the infield. Escobar, the shortstop, squeezes it. And Chisinau's retired on one pitch. Wade Davis, who was so vital and so important in the Royals' run to the World Championship a year ago, on to pitch the ninth. Has had another really good year, although he did have an injury. Yeah, he was on the DL. The road yes, he did. But this guy has been so good over the last few years. He's been unbelievable. I mean, strike throwing machine and that cutter, and he's into the mid 90s, and he was just, you know, he's tough to beat. Now the 2-0 on its way to Rajay. That's in there for a strike at 95. Out of play. And we're back to even at 2-2. Two and two. Rajay did well just to get a piece of that. And he stays alive. Raj 0 for 3 today. We 
Wade Davis and the Royals down a run here in the night. The 3 2 pitch. And he locks up Davis with a fastball, and there are two down. Play of the game brought to you by Pat O'Brien, Chevrolet, and Jan Gomes with a smash into the bullpen. The first pitch he saw in his first at bat since coming back from the DL from the banged up sh the shoulder and then the fracture in the hand. A really good moment for Gomes yeah, and the Indians. That was awesome. Yes, it was. I remember that last at bat he had. It was in Minnesota. Boy, he came back and got the first pitch. Down low. Tyler Naquin, remember, he was hit by a pitch leading off that third inning by Ian Kennedy on a ball that came up and in, hit him on the back of the right arm. And then Gomes homered on the next pitch. That made it two to one Cleveland and it stayed that way until the eighth. And the Indians were able to push across the go ahead run. And the two one is a big hook. Strike two to even the count. Sanchez had a no hitter for six and two thirds innings and then Hanley Ramirez took him deep to tie that game one one with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Down on strikes goes Naquin. And we go to the bottom of the ninth in Kansas City. The Indians clinging to a one run lead. the game brought to you by Mazda home field advantage in the American League Division Series on the line here today the Indians have the lead but they still need some cooperation to secure that Boston and Toronto tied 1 1 they need a Red Sox loss well, and an Indians win that's we'd still even if the Red Sox win we'd have to go to Detroit 
could still secure it, right? Could, yes. Yes, we, I mean, if they win. Right. To, to wrap it up here today, gotcha. That's what we need. Uh, to yeah, if we want to head home, that's right. Cody Allen is on the pitch here in the ninth. And this will be, this is the third straight day. Yes, it is. Came in Cody. Friday, came in yesterday. But he's got more than enough time to rest up. If we have to play that game tomorrow, he would be, you'd have to guess he'd be unavailable. I don't think I he'd push him four days so. in a row. No. But then he'd have until obviously Thursday to get himself rested up and ready to go for a playoff run. Daniel Nava batting for the first time, fouls it back. Now the one one. Call to strike. Slap foul the other way. That little ball boy played that carom very well. He went out into the playing field like he knew it was going to be a foul ball all the way. And gives it to a little girl. Nice job. She goes home happy. Now the one two on its way. Bounced in front of the plate and a good block by Roberto Perez. Always got to be on the alert whether there's anybody on base or not just to kind of get your mind and your body moving. Especially when you're just fresh into the game. Nava trying to spark a rally for Kansas City and they're faithful. Cody trying to put him away. The 2 2 is low and a full count. Now the payoff pitch. And that's fouled out of play. We are in the ninth. And the 3 2 bang on the ground to first base. Santana has it. He'll take it to the bag. One down. And that will bring up Salvador Perez. Always nice to get that first out in the ninth. It's not the end all be all. It's not that a team still can't rally, hit a home run, whatever the case. But boy, when a team gets the leadoff man on in the ninth and they're down, it just seems like the energy goes from one to 100. <laughs> Yeah, that that leadoff man means a lot when you're when you're trailing in a ball game to get him on. Breaking ball to Perez just down low increases your chances of getting him around and getting him in. You know, you've got a couple of different ways to go about it, but especially in a one run game. And this is a Kansas City team that plays well in their home ballpark, much like the Indians. Try to go with a breaking ball again, but he missed and now it's two and oh. So we're in the ninth. Detroit still trails Atlanta one to nothing. They're in the eighth. 
Toronto Boston tied 1 1 they're also in the eighth inning. And now it's 3 0 Baltimore leading the Yankees 5 2 they're in the bottom of the ninth in New York it looks like the Orioles are set to put that one away with two outs. Rio pitch and now we'll see Terrence Gore as Perez draws a one out walk on four pitches. Here comes the speedster for Kansas City and he is all kind of fast. Well we had this matchup uh, uh, last time Kansas City was in Cleveland used him as a pinch runner. One day he made it the next day he did. not we're going to round three here with one out and you know he'll have the green light if he gets the jump off and running it. Allen was the pitcher Perez was the catcher. They were able to get him the second time in Cleveland so let's see what happens here. Follow Orlando is 0 for 3 today. He was 17 for 17 until Perez was able to throw him out. And Allen did a nice job of delivering or getting that ball to Perez in plenty of time. That has to be in the back of your mind if you're Gore, as great as he's been. This is the only combo that's been able to throw him out. And maybe it's one thing if this is the sixth inning of a game in June. But this is the ninth inning down a run in the final game of the season. You don't want to get thrown out here if you're Gore. He's he's going to run if he gets the jump. There's no doubt. That's what he's put into the game for. He is going to if he gets a jump, he's running. He's not going, and the pitch is high. Ball one. It, you can see, uh, you know what Di uh, Orlando. Is doing there. He's going to give him an opportunity, but that that was a very quick pitch there by uh, Allen. He delivered the ball to the home plate in a hurry. The time that they got him, Cody got there in about one two five, which is a little bit under the average. But it was the one eight zero oh throw by Perez, and I mean a perfect throw that got him. Foul back our way. Oh. Another one right at that us. one was too hard. You didn't want any <laughs> part of that one, pal, because I was ducking. That was coming too hard. That would have taken my hand off. You would have been in a cast. <laughs> Allen with a 1 1. Maybe. Time cold. And if you remember the last time Perez made that throw it was a little backhanded throw where he had everything and momentum was just perfect with I mean a perfect throw on the base. Runner goes and it pitches up high throw down. He's out at second base. They got him again. Round three goes to Perez. Two out of three ain't bad. How about that? Gore believes he's out. The Royals are going to take a look and yeah, perhaps challenge it. They've got nothing to lose. The tag was up high. The only question, did he get him before the foot got in? They got in. him. They got him. They said nope. They got him right on the shoulder before that foot got in there. Another well done job by Perez and Allen to hold him that speedster and I mean you oh. have to be perfect. Did you see what happened. His back leg hit the ground and it forced him to stop just a little bit short of the bag and they got him boy swing and a miss and that's going to do it. The game is over. The Indians win it by a final score of three to two. They sweep the Royals beat them eight straight to end the season. The Indians are 94 and 67. The Central Division champs now wait to see where they will open the American League Division Series. Could be in Cleveland Thursday. Could be at Fenway Park. A well pitched game by Josh Tomlin who wins his 13th of the year. 
Cody Allen nails down his 32nd save here in the ninth with a terrific assist from Roberto Perez. Terrence Gore is an absolute weapon, but the Indians, well, they've solved him two in a row now. This was back in Cleveland. He almost had it, but he was unsure who was covering that time. But the second time, there was no doubt. A terrific throw, and for the third time, you see.